Hello programmers, in this exercise we will read information from the keyboard about the amount of energy used during the month and then compute the electric bill. This version of the project presentation demonstrates the use of the C and C++ languages. Similar presentations cover the Visual Basic and Java languages. The topics here include the use of the if, else, if, and else statements that are used to separate numeric values into different ranges. Also covered are ways to detect illegal inputs from the keyboard in both C and C++. Also included are the declaration of constants and variables. The if, else if, and else statements can be used to separate numeric values into different categories. For example, in one exercise, a test score of 70 or greater at the DMV is a pass, and anything below that is a fail. We can compute letter grades of A, B, C, D, or F based on a score percentage. For the electric bill, there will be different billing rates depending on the amount of energy used. Here is one of my electric bills. I see that it was $174.37 for that month. That is a lot of money, but I live in a multi-generational household with eight people. We have two refrigerators, a freezer, and lots of laundry and video games. Since we have a well for water, that also shows up on the electric bill. I guess it's not too bad considering that the month's bill is for both electricity and water and would be around $21.79 a person for the month. It gets even more expensive during the summer when all the fans and air conditioning are running. Electricity is billed in kilowatt hours, known as KWH. A kilowatt hour is 1,000 watts for an hour. A kilowatt hour is the equivalent of running a 100 watt light bulb for 10 hours or a 1,000 watt hair dryer for one hour. The electric company has different ways of billing residential customers. They bill usage by time of day or bill at an increasing higher rates called tiers depending on the amount of electricity used. This project does not cover billing by time of day. The base rate for tier 1 is 23 cents for each kilowatt hours up to 350. Then the price increases to 29 cents per kilowatt hour. After 1,450 kilowatt hours, the price increases to 45 cents per kilowatt hour. Our house used 673 kilowatt hours for the month shown. There were 350 tier 1 kilowatt hours and 323 tier 2 kilowatt hours. The bill was computed at 350 kilowatt hours times 23 cents per kilowatt hour for tier 1 and 323 times 29 cents for tier 2. The total is computed by adding the tier 1 bill plus the tier 2 bill and an additional energy commission tax of 20 cents for a total of $174.37. These billing rates are only examples for this exercise. There are different rates for the winter and summer. And there are periodic rate increases, so don't use these values to compute your own bill. Here is the project definition. Write a program that inputs the kilowatt hours used and computes and displays the electric bill for each tier, the tax, and total bill. The bill is computed using pricing levels known as tiers based on the amount of energy used. The first tier is known as the baseline allowance of 350 kilowatt hours and is billed at 23 cents per kilowatt hour. Energy used between 351 and 1,450 kilowatt hours is in tier 2 and is billed at 29 cents per kilowatt hour. The third tier is for usage over 1,450 kilowatt hours and is billed at 45 cents per kilowatt hour. An energy commission tax of 20 cents is added to the final bill. The project definition also states that constants need to be defined for Tier 1 allowance set to 350 kilowatt hours, Tier 2 allowance set to 1,450 kilowatt hours, Tier 1 billing rate set to 23 cents per kilowatt hour, Tier 2 billing rate set to 29 cents per kilowatt hour, 
tier 3 billing rate set to 45 cents per kilowatt hour and a constant for the energy commission tax set to 20 cents. The project may seem really complicated until we break it down into smaller pieces. Let's start by identifying the inputs and output. The only input is kilowatt hours used. The only output is the electric bill that shows the amount for each tier, tax, and total. We can simplify the English project definition into an algorithm, which is a set of steps to solve a problem. Here is the algorithm. 1. Input the kilowatt hours. 2. Determine kilowatt hours in each tier. 3. Compute the bill, including tax. 4. Display the electric bill. We can place the input, processing, and output into a hypo chart. HIPO stands for Hierarchical Input Process Output. If I used 673 kilowatt hours, the bill is $174.37. The colors for the text character in this presentation are for illustrative purposes only. I am showing white characters to indicate the prompt messages, light blue for the user inputs, and green for the display of the program's output. The next thing to do is to determine how many kilowatt hours are used in each tier. Since I used 673 kilowatt hours, I ended up in tier 2. But I'm not getting billed at 29 cents for all my energy used. I'm only getting billed at 23 cents per kilowatt hours for the first 350 kilowatt hours. The number of kilowatt hours in tier 2 is computed as the total of 673 minus the 350 from tier 1, which is 323. I did good this month and I didn't go into tier 3. The bill for tier 1 is 350 times 23 cents, which is $80.50. The bill for tier 2 is 323 times 29 cents, which is $93.67. I didn't use too much electricity this month, so there is nothing in tier 3. And finally, the Energy Commission tax of 20 cents for a total of $174.37. We can see this on the actual bill. Since nothing was in Tier 3, it is not necessary to display Tier 3 on the bill. The program also needs to reject illegal inputs. Here is a test of the program with a non-numeric value entered when the program is expecting numbers. An error message needs to be displayed. Now is a good time to pause the video and get a copy of the Paycheck program in either C or C++. I will be referring to it several times during this discussion. There are many similarities between the electric bill program and the paycheck program. Even better if you can print a copy of the paycheck program and mark it up as we go along. Use comments for the title block that has the name of the program, your name and class, and a list of inputs and outputs. The include files and constants are placed before the line that contains int main. Int main defines a block of code that is executed when the program is run. The block of code starts with an open curly brace and ends with a closing curly brace. The executable code for the program is organized into three sections, input, process, and output. The code for the C program starts out with the header files, pound include, open angle bracket stdio.h close angle bracket used for scanf and printf. The C++ program starts out with pound include open angle bracket io stream close angle bracket used for cn and c out. Pound include open angle bracket io manep close angle bracket used to set two digits past the decimal. Using namespace standard semicolon I like to place the declaration for constants at the top of the code, so I will cover them now, even though the list of inputs and outputs are the first things described in the project definition. The declarations for constants are placed after the pound include statements and the C++ using namespace standard. Make sure that you don't place a semicolon at the end of the pound include statements. However, a semicolon is needed on the using namespace standard semicolon line for C++. 
after the constants have been declared, the line int main, open parentheses, int arg c, comma, character star arg b, open close square bracket, close parentheses, and its opening curly brace identify the code to be executed when the program is run. Here is some more information about the constants. Looking at the project definition, declarations of constants are needed for the Tier 1 allowance, the Tier 2 allowance, billing rates for Tier 1, Tier 2, and Tier 3, the Energy Commission tax. The way these statements are written in English is good for people to read, but must be converted into code using the proper syntax rules depending on the language you are using. Constants are values that cannot be changed when the program is running, although we could just use the numeric values such as 350 or 1450 in the middle of the program instead of going to all the effort of declaring named constants. Constants help document the program and give meaning to the numeric values. If someone would look at the program later and just see the number 350 in the middle of the program, it would not be very clear of what it meant or why it was there. These are the names I have chosen for the constants in my program. You can use the same names or choose your own names, but the names must be consistent through the entire program. Although not a requirement of the language itself, it is standard practice to declare constants using only uppercase letters, digits 0 through 9, and the underscore character. Names cannot start with a digit 0 through 9. The underscore character is used to separate English words because spaces are not permitted as part of a name. The syntax for declaring a constant is different between C and C++. Here are examples on how to declare a constant named Tier 1 allowance in C and C++. The C language starts with a pound defined, does not use the equal sign or semicolon at the end of the line. C++ starts with the const keyword, a data type, a name, the equal sign, a value, and ends with the semicolon. Other programming languages have their own syntax for declaring a constant. Constants in C++ have a data type associated with them. In this example, the data type for Tier 1 allowance is double, which can hold digits past the decimal point. Constants in C do not have a data type. The pound define actually does a find and replace before the code is compiled, similar to a find and replace in a text editor or word processor. This is why we don't want a semicolon to be part of the pound define statement, or we would be adding semicolon characters into the code where we don't want them. Now that you see how to declare the first constant, you need to follow the same format when you declare the rest of the constants. Start the executable code in a C or C++ program with the int main and the open curly brace. The int main should be placed after the lines for the pound include files have been entered and the constants declared. The int argc and character star argv are not used unless you plan to write a program that is run directly from the Windows DOS prompt, the Mac OS terminal, or Linux shell. You can ignore worrying about the argc and argv for now. It is time to start looking at the variables. A variable is a named location in memory that is used to hold a data value while the program is running. Each variable in C and C++ must have a data type associated with them. The data types used in this program will be double, which can hold digits past the decimal. I know I need variables to hold values entered at the keyboard. I need a variable for KWH. I named it KWH. I am starting each variable name with a lowercase character, A through Z, and an uppercase letter, capital A through capital Z to start each English word. This is called camel case. You can give your variables any name you wish, but make sure that you don't start with the digit 0 through 9 or have any spaces in a variable name. Make the names meaningful and be consistent throughout the program. To declare a double data type for KWH type double KWH semicolon. 
We already determined we need a variable to hold the KWH that is input from the keyboard. Here are other variables we need. Tier 1 usage, Tier 2 usage, Tier 3 usage, Tier 1 cost, Tier 2 cost, Tier 3 cost, and the total bill. I added each of the variables to this table. When writing a program, it is not necessary to build a table like this. I am just providing it for the discussion. One of the things I would like you to notice is that although I started the discussion using names that looked much better in English, now I'm giving each of the variable names that are acceptable to C and C++. I am starting each name with a lowercase character and I'm not using any spaces in the names. The declaration of the variables will be the same for both C and C++ programs. Double KWH, total kilowatt hours used. Double Tier 1 usage, amount used in Tier 2. Double Tier 2 usage, amount used in Tier 2. I got you started declaring the variables. You need to follow this pattern and declare the rest of the variables. In the C++ language, we use the scanf routine to input from the keyboard console. In C++, we use cn for console input. In both cases, we need to identify the data type that the input routine is expecting. We already defined KWH as the double data type. It can hold only numbers. When the program is run and letters are typed when the input routine is expecting numbers, an error is flagged and the program keeps running. Maybe this seems like a stupid question, but where in the program do we check to see if scanf or cn was successful in reading numbers from the keyboard? We want to see if scanf or cn detected an input error right after the keyboard input. There is no point in trying to compute the bill if we don't have good data. Scanf in the C language returns a count of the number of data items that were input. We are expecting only one input for KWH. If the resulting count is not one, then an error occurred. You can either test the result and say, it is an error if the result is not a one, or in this case, I am saying it is an error if the result is a zero. The CN in the C++ program sets a flag named fail that is set to true if an error occurred. In the C++ version of the program, I'm checking the flag by calling cn.fail, open close parentheses. Another way to check is if not cn. If there is an error, display a message and end the program by using the return one semicolon statement. Since we started the program with int main, we should have an integer such as 0, 1, or 2, etc. as part of the return statement. If we started the program with void main, open close parentheses, then an integer would not be permitted as part of the return statement. At this point in our programming career, we are not making our program part of a group of programs that are run one after another in a batch file or script file, so the value in the return statement does not really matter. Let's take a detour for a moment and look at the paycheck program again and see how it separated the number of hours into regular hours and overtime hours. If the number of hours worked is less than or equal to 40, there is no overtime. Set the regular number of hours to the hours worked and the overtime to zero. If there is overtime, the first 40 hours are regular hours and anything over 40 are overtime hours. Because the billing rates are different for the different tiers, we need to determine how many kilowatt hours are in each tier. In the first example, only 247 kilowatt hours, so everything is in tier 1. In the second example, 732 kilowatt hours are used. The first 350 kilowatt hours are in tier 1, and the rest that are remaining are in tier 2. We can determine tier 2 usage by subtracting the 350 of tier 1 from the total kilowatt hours of 732, which gives us 373 kilowatt hours for tier 2. In the third example, 1,450 kilowatt hours are used, which is everything in Tier 1 and Tier 2. In this case, 
Tier 1 gets the first 350, and Tier 2 gets 1,100, which is 1,450 minus 350. So the total is actually 1,450. In the fourth example, 2,148 kilowatt hours are used. Tier 1 gets 350, Tier 2 gets 1,100, and Tier 3 gets what is left over. Tier 3 gets 2,148 minus 1,450, which is 698, to get a total of 2,148 kilowatt hours. Now, we need to figure out how to put this into code. This is going to be similar to how the paycheck program separated the number of hours worked into regular hours and overtime hours, but a little more complicated because we have three conditions instead of two. We can use the if, else if, else construct. There are a couple of things to notice here. I am placing the open curly brace at the end of the line for the if, else if, and else statements instead of starting a new line with the open curly brace. This is a fairly common practice in programming because it saves little space when writing out the code. The second thing to notice is that the if statement and else if statement both require a logic expression inside the parentheses that evaluates to true or false, but the final else statement does not have a condition. The else if statement is only executed when the if statement is not executed. The final else statement is executed only when the preceding if and else if statements are not executed. Let's start off with what happens if the kilowatt hours used is less than or equal to the tier 1 allowance. If that is the case, then all of the kilowatt hours fall into the tier 1 usage and nothing in tier 2 usage or tier 3 usage. I want to use the named constants that were defined at the top of the program. If the tier 1 allowance ever changed, then I would only need to change it one time at the location where the constant is defined. Otherwise, if I use the value of 350 and it changed, there may be more than one place where 350 is located in the code, and I might miss some of them. If I just did find and replace, I also might change a 1350 or a 3507 unintentionally because they had part of 350 in their value. If we have 673 kilowatt hours, then the first if statement fails because 673 is not less than or equal to the 350 defined by tier 1 allowance. So the program progresses to the else if statement. 673 is less than the tier 2 allowance of 1450, so the else if statement passes. We can set the Tier 1 usage to the Tier 1 allowance, which is 350, and then set the Tier 2 usage to the 673 minus Tier 1 allowance, or 673 minus 350, which becomes 323. We want this program to correctly compute the Tier usage values for any value that is input for kilowatt hours. For the next example, the if and else if statements have already determined that the kilowatt hours is not less than or equal to either the tier 1 allowance or the tier 2 allowance, so therefore kilowatt hours must have finally reached tier 3. When that happens, we can compute all three tier usages when the kilowatt hours is over the 1450 for the tier 2 allowance. Tier 1 usage is still equal to Tier 1 allowance. Tier 2 usage is equal to the Tier 2 allowance minus the Tier 1 allowance. Tier 3 usage is equal to everything that is left over past the Tier 2 allowance. To compute the bill, first compute the charge for each tier. This is going to be easy. Just multiply the usage by the billing rate for each tier. The total bill is going to be the cost for each tier plus the commission tax. The last thing to do is to display the bill using five lines. Refer back to the paycheck program on how to use either the printf or cout statements to display text and numeric data. The dollar amounts need to be displayed with two digits past the decimal place. This is the end of the discussion for the electric bill. I hope you are able to understand it and are able to use the if, else if, 
else statements to solve many more programming problems in the future. Bye for now.